I mean, the overall context this week, there's been a kind of a curious response to Munster's ejection from Europe. A lot of people are kind of almost resenting this new money approach that Toulon have. And that's all very well. But I mean, you know, there's no point crying in our beer. How are we going to close that gap? There does seem to be a gap between the Irish provinces and the top French sides and English sides uh, financially. I, th I don't think, it's a, I don't think there's a, a, an enormous gap, especially in one-off occasions. I think when you look at the depth, and there's an interesting you know, analogy when you take Atletico Madrid this week, have gone through the whole Champions League, they've got to the final, they've mm. used 15 players the mm. whole way through the league. So our best players put together in a team mm. on any given day, they can, they can achieve whatever they like. I think if you're talking like a Tour de France, a three-week sort of slog, it would be very hard mm. to compete. So we have to make sure, you know, as, as Shane Logan said there, talking about developing Irish players to play for Ireland, very key mm. what he said there. We'll continue that, but get the right sort of imports to make sure that we're competitive. We, we, fair enough. I mean, everybody wants to see the Irish players come through, Shane, but like, like it or like it not, the successful Munster and Leinster teams of the last decade have had high-class foreign imports that it looks like we'll no longer be able to afford. It's going to be more difficult to afford them, and I think they are vital. They've, pr they've proved that in the history of Irish rugby in the professional game has shown that key top-class signings from international mm. uh, bring them into the provinces. Rocky they Elton and Dougie Howlett, Rocky, take two. Yeah, they huge. wouldn't come John in Langford. the current environment um, because the French wages would be too attractive. I, th I think it may be, that may be, that may be mm. an issue, and it'll be, it'll, let, it'll be more difficult to, to get the top players. I think what you might look that is uh, get uh, slightly below or you, you get a player earlier on in their professional yes. career or you get them later on in the professional career, you mm. mightn't get those prime years. And to be honest with you, if you get good enough players at either end of that scale, they'll mm. contribute to the, uh, to the provinces. Mm. Yeah, we're used to success, Don. That's the problem. I mean, from the, pun the punter's <coughs> point of view, yeah. maybe, you know, the traditional rugby supporter has changed. I mean, they now want success. They want to win trophies. Well, the bottom line is they've been brought up with su su yeah. success over the last decade, right? I mean, you know, a young fellow following Ireland 20 or 30 years ago was hoping they'd win a game mm. every three or four outings. Now you go into Europe, the expectation levels are there. I mean, even in Marseille last Sunday, the amount of Munster people who honestly believe that Munster could go out there and win. Mm. Uh, the problem is the market has changed. Um, I've no doubt the, the, the Heineken Cups, the Munster and Leinster one, with the Brad Thorns, with the Dougie Howlett's and that, they were crucial in getting them over the line. And I think they still have a huge role to play because of, uh, you take that Munster team, that new evolving side, mm. they're at a stage in their development now, I think, where they could do with an infusion of two world-class overseas players. The problem is... An infusion of money, in other words? Yeah. Well, the bottom Where's line... Where's it going to come from? Well, I think even, look, there is a recognition that the market is, the, the money in France at the moment from three different sources, the Canal Plus television deal has increased their annual income from 32 million to 72 million. Mm. The French Federation have given them a 2 million one-off bonus because of joining the Heineken Cup. Mm. Plus, obviously, there's uh, increased revenues from the proposed new Champions Cup. Mm. So uh, it's, it's a different market. But the bottom line is, Philip Brown, I thought, interesting during the week, he Fire said for the Chief first executive. time, yeah, he for the first time said, look, that you may now have to look at outside investment. Mm -hmm. As long as you keep your governance in place, but there is a place now for an outside investment. Well, so the, is the family silver up for sale? So from an IRFU point of view, I don't think that the RFU are going to um, cease control of the provinces. So, no, 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 so, so, so what I'm yeah. saying, so what you're saying is, if in this investment, you no, know, it's an investment for no return. What you're saying, so it's really philanthropy. Mm. That's what we're really, that's what you're well, really saying. Well, then. well, that is one element of it, but that's happened already. But you've had you've had investment in in Leinster in their fantastic uh, facilities in mm. in New right, from the yeah. Yeah. Pers perspective. They have to make sure. That our, our homegrown players, our top homegrown players, our top internationals are paid what the market here would dictate. They don't need to be paid the equivalent mm. of what they'll pay in France because they never will be able to. Mm. So just look after those players as well as they possibly can. And then you're looking, and I think any player, if you bring in a world-class player, the best of their type in a, a specific position, there's no one within the team mm. that will be grudged that. That's they'll be grudged the big, it's no. never been an issue. They'll be grudged no. the person they, that comes in on big money that's not worth it. Right. They won't begrudge a world-class player. And that's what these but the, the big issue for me, need. sorry, Shane, the big issue for me was Johnny Sexton. The the RFU yeah. allowed him to go for 50,000 that Leinster had in their yeah. coffers yeah. that they should have been able to top up mm. his salary. Mm -hmm. The bottom line, you were bringing in an outsider that you had to pay money to, to yeah. and, and, and they weren't allowed to do that. I think that's off the wall. more than that, Donald, right? It's not only did they not uh, lose him for like you know 50 or 100 grand or whatever it was, it then it, it's harder to keep the players in the mm. team, right? So mm. the other players are contracts. They next thing they're looking for more balls because there's no Johnny Sexton. Also trying to attract an 
overseas player they say well Johnny Sexton isn't anymore it's mm. less likely mm. that was a crucial move that they made not to hold that player and I think what the you know to get back to the to yeah, what how we to change compete, the model I'll tell you the model I think something that the RFU will have to look at is giving longer term uh, contracts to younger players mm. because they need to keep them for and they also need to <laughs> look to negotiate during contracts as well mm. I think that's something they've always they've failed to do they don't negotiate until the last six and nine mm. months of the contract they need to a year before it's up if a player's going very well time in for another couple of years well, well, well they're, they're smiling, yeah. they're, I, I smile because I absolutely 100% agree with them but it'll never happen right. why because we now have agents and mm -hmm. the agent will go my player ain't going to commit because I think he's going to go there they will advise that player mm -hmm. no matter what sort of relationship take it no matter what sort of relationship you have they will say no hang on because in a year's time we will be able to get you more because if you break through there is no point signing a long-term deal sure. if mm. you can everything Shane there but is I, absolutely I, spot on can, we just, can we just step back for a second because I mean you know the, the fundamental point and we've seen it play out all year in the boardrooms is that French rugby is quite happy to exist without mm. Heineken Cup or son of mm. Heineken Cup English rugby not so much but still mm. can independently mm. exist Irish rugby as we know it in the Rabo, can't exist without European participation. So that's the long-term problem. Is the, is the Rabo the way forward for the Irish provinces? Or do they have to join a league with the French? And well, the, the Rabo needs huge tweaking. There's no question about that. Personally, I think, and having seen the way the negotiations worked out when Scotland and, and Wales were willing to leave Ireland hang there at the end of the day in terms sure. of, of uh, what was going to happen, I would see Ireland's future within in the Aviva Premiership, involved in an English league where you have sufficient television money that can be generated out of that mm. that will allow more autonomy for the Irish clubs. Well, Connor, would we be welcome? I mean, you talked to I would, I would, I would bosses. I would, I would just go, wow, that's a, that's a suggestion I've never heard before. But I mean, I think the first tweak that's been made just in terms of sheer qualification, if you take it back, is look at what happened last night. I mean, Zebra mm. have now leapfrogged Treviso, mm. and there's only one side. Treviso aren't going out against Glasgow tonight and going, we're in Europe next year, we're we in need holidays, to get in. Yeah. They are going absolutely yeah. half leather. So little things like that will help, and I think European is just going to grow mm. and grow. again. I mean, it's, it's a huge entity as it mm. is. It's going to grow. Well, I, so I'm it's not entirely certain if that's the case, because you know the, uh, the, the dominance of the French League will become more and more, be, and it'll be more importance placed on that. The weakening mm. of the Rabo teams, which is, is going on at the moment, and I think will continue to go on, although mm. maybe you know, they may be c competitive down the end at Treviso uh, um, and a Zebra, but at, actually at the top end they're weighing clear, mm. the top three are so yeah. much better but so you've got this middle ground that, that is just it's it just being eaten up and so there is no the solution chain, where do you I, see? I, I, I Dolan, we spoke about this before and I said mm. I, the RFU need to look for a new competition uh, mm. for the Irish teams to be in because they're actually too big for that competition they're in at the moment, the money will never be dr driven the, because of the nature of the audience share, the money will never be there and we have three superpowers with mm. brilliant stadiums, with corporate facilities and with a massive fan base. And, th and that's exactly why I think the Aviva down the road is a viable option for Ireland. But the other thing I think, the point that has to be made... The Aviva Premiership. The Aviva Premiership, yeah. sorry. But th there's two different agendas at, at, at bear when you're talking about European rugby. The French, really, they don't give it. The French clubs, Bougelal, mm. all these guys, they don't give a toss about the French two, national two team. Two long players played uh, Six Nations. Yeah, well, they had four, four French players of, of started, started last yeah. week for Toulon. But outside of that, they don't give a toss about the state of affairs of the French national team. Mm. The Irish provinces are a conduit for building the national team, whether mm. we like it or not. That is but their But can function. you serve those two masters? I mean, that's, that's, that's the problem. Yeah. Well, I think we've proven we can, and the other option that's going to happen that's happening in the, in the dim and distant future is the fact that we're seeing the Super 14 becoming the Super 18. Mm. Well, what's going to happen mm. in South Africa? Are they going to start moving mm. up here longer term? Okay. Because that's a big possibility with that television market. Okay, well, a few interesting ones floated out there, but... So